Hi, my name's Luke with harmonica.com and when it comes to playing grooves like this one, tongue blocking is the only path to the sound. This kind of style works great when you're backing up a singer or soloist and I especially love playing this style when I'm all alone because it kind of mimics a whole band. Single notes kind of play a bass line and then the chords punctuate it. This video is in eight levels and in the first level here, I'm just gonna show you how to isolate notes using tongue blocking. I've got a C harmonica here. We're playing in second position in the key of G. If we just play whole number one on the harmonica, what's happening is our lip is blocking whole number two. Same thing, if we draw on holes number one and two together, it's our lip that's actually blocking hole number three. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our tongue to block hole number one so that we're just playing a draw two together. Now I'm gonna angle the tongue kind of downwards and we're gonna be playing out of the right corner of the mouth. So here's draw one, two. And now you can hear as I block hole one with my tongue, we're just hearing hole number two. So my tongue is going down and to the left. This part of my tongue is blocking hole number one and the lip is blocking hole number three. So all we're hearing is that draw hole number two. If you're like me and you were lip blocking for years before you ever learned tongue blocking, it's very strange because we're used to always playing out of the center of our mouth when we're lip blocking. Now all of a sudden tongue blocking, it's playing out of the right side of the mouth. And that seems very strange. But this is actually the correct technique for tongue blocking. So let's just try tongue blocking now the whole two. And we're going to go from a draw to a blow. Okay, so for this basic groove, there's only three notes we need to isolate. The draw two and the blow two, which we've already done. And now we need to talk about the draw one. For the draw one, we're actually gonna switch our tongue to the right side of the hole, and we're gonna play the draw one out of the left side of the mouth. Wait a sec, what? I know I just told you that we isolate notes playing out of the right side of the mouth, and that's true like 90% of the time. But when it comes to the draw one, we're gonna go the opposite direction. We're gonna block on the right side of the hole, and we're gonna play out of the left side of the mouth. Now, why are we gonna do that? Why don't we just scoot to the right? Well, you'll see, we're gonna be lifting our tongue later to punctuate it with the chord. And this is actually one of the huge advantages of tongue blocking is that we can play out of both sides of the mouth. So we kind of have two mouths. So I can play holes one and four at the same time I'm blowing or I can switch back and forth very quickly. Try doing that lip blocking. We'll get into that more in level six. But for right now, we're just gonna play the draw one by blocking holes two and three with our tongue. So here is holes one, two, and three. Now blocking holes two and three with the tongue. So experiment with that for a while. You might want to pause the video and just experiment with drawing on holes one, two, and three, and then blocking holes two and three with the tongue. So what we want to do now is just play draw two, blow two, draw one, blow two, using tongue blocking to isolate the notes and just try and get used to this tongue switching thing when we go to the draw one. If you're feeling frustrated right now, don't worry. It's very normal for this to feel very awkward at this stage of the game. And it may take you days, weeks, or like it did for me, in my case, it was months before this technique started to feel comfortable. This is not the easiest way to isolate notes. I teach the easiest way to learn how to isolate notes in this video right here. So if you're a beginner and this is making you wanna quit right now, please don't quit. Consider making it your number one priority to stay inspired. If this isn't inspiring, you can always come back to it. Go check out this video, which is how 99.9 percent of people find is the easiest way to isolate notes. But if you're still stoked to be able to do this groove, then let's go on to level two. In level two, we're gonna add the technique called tongue lifting. And this is where the magic really starts to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play each note that we've been isolating, and then we're simply gonna lift our tongue off of the comb, allowing the chord to come through. Tongue on. Tongue off. Tongue on. Tongue off. Tongue on. Tongue off. Tongue on. 
tongue off. So anywhere you see the draw one two or the blow one two tabs, which are in blue, we're not using another breath to make that note happen. We're on the same breath. We're just lifting our tongue, pulling our tongue back from the comb of the harmonica and allowing the breath that we've already started to sound the chord instead of just the single note. So the blue tabs are the sounds that happen from tongue lifting. Let's try and do it in time at a nice slow tempo, 40 beats a minute. Ready, go. Okay, let's try it quite a bit faster now at 60 beats per minute. Ready, go. All right, if you've hung on this long, congratulations. I'm proud of you. You may just need to work with what we've gone through so far for some number of days or weeks, and then come back and do the next level, level three. Now we're gonna learn how to swing because it doesn't be the thing if it ain't got that swing. So we've been playing this on straight eighth notes so far like this. So the single notes are coming like one and then the chord on and, single note two, chord and, three and, four and, single note, chord. That's what we would call straight eighth notes. And what we wanna do now is turn this into swung eighths. This is also known as a shuffle, swing, boogie, rag. All these terms refer to delaying the second notes to be closer to the following downbeat. And how we're gonna calibrate that and figure out where it should come, how much later, is we're gonna use a triplet. So I want you to say this out of your mouth along with me. We're gonna say one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, and we're gonna clap together. And I want you to both say it and clap it along with me. Okay, ready? Here we go. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Now, if you're like most people, maybe you might have clapped along with me, but you didn't actually open your mouth and say the word. In order for this exercise to work, you need to say the words out loud and clap at the same time, all right? Let's try this again. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Now we're simply not gonna clap when we say the word trip. So we're gonna take out the middle one and we're just gonna be clapping when we say the number and when we say the word let. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And this is a swung feel. Bum, 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 bum. One and two and three and four. Okay, so I'm gonna put the metronome on and we are gonna hold the single note for two clicks and then we're gonna lift our tongue and allow the chord to come through on the third click. Ready and go. Remember, we're not using our lungs on the third click to sound the chord, right? It's all one breath. We are just lifting our tongue. All right, level four. Now we're gonna make the last tweak to this that we need to in order for it to be the actual groove. This groove that we're learning right now is all played over the one chord. If you don't know what I mean by the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, you can check out this video, Chords for Beginners. I also talk about it in my Blues for Beginners video. So you can go check out those videos if you don't know what I mean by a one chord. But when we've been doing the blow two, the chord we've been doing there is a blow one two, but really, since this is all over the one chord, we want that to be a draw one two. So the final tweak to make this groove legit is to make all of our chords be draw one twos. You ready to give it a try? Three triplet, go triplet.
And right now, my friend, if you were just playing that, you were playing a slowed down version of this. So congratulations. Hey, if you're enjoying these lessons, you might enjoy checking out my beginner to boss course. Thousands of people who thought they were musically hopeless are killing it on the harmonica. Come and join them over at harmonica.com. Now, if today's your first day tongue blocking and you've made it this far, wow, that's freaking awesome. Sweet. I wouldn't try and learn anything else today. I think you've learned enough. You can just take what you have, take that riff, and go and work on that riff for some period of weeks or months, and it'll start to come together more and more. There is one more detail about it that I want to mention for you to just stick in the noggin that you can work on over time. And that is, we want the bass line to be louder than the chords. We want the chords to be kind of ghosts, where you kind of don't, you don't hear them that loudly. The chords should be quiet relative to the single notes. To get to this point, we've been using our lungs, even though it's all on one breath, we've been using our lungs air to pull on those chords, right? But what's actually a much cooler sound eventually is the force of the tongue coming off of the comb, just that in and of itself is the air that's activating those draw chords and that helps them to get at the appropriate volume to really make this groove feel right. We don't want it to sound like this. We want it to sound like this. Let's see if we can get those chords to sound a bit quieter. Use the tongue to activate those chords. For level five, we are going to learn the tongue slap. Now the word slap can be a bit misleading because it's not about how hard you're throwing your tongue against the comb. As I learned out the hard way, I thought it was a tongue slap. I thought the harder that I slapped my tongue against the comb, the better it was gonna sound. I mean, I literally got blisters on my tongue. But really, you don't have to push your tongue hard against the comb. It's not an issue of force, it's an issue of timing. And all a tongue slap is, is it's just starting with the cord and then putting our tongue against the comb to get the single note. And to my ear, when I hear people doing this, I've never heard anybody really talk about this, but I think it's kind of like a dynamic thing. Like you start quiet and then quickly crescendo or quickly get louder, so. Whereas single note sounds like. We add the slap, it sounds. So you can hear how it has more of a percussive attack to it. It sounds kind of like blah, blah, like a flam, blah. All right, so let's forget about the chords for a second and let's just work on that slapping. Again, it's not how hard the tongue goes against it, it's just the timing of it. All right, let's add the chords back in now. Level six, I'm gonna show you something that you can play over the four chord. We're gonna to start to work towards thinking about being able to play a real 12 bar blues with this lick, okay? So for the four chord, this is all gonna be blows. We're gonna start on the blow one, tongue blocking on the right side of the hole. So we'll be blocking holes two and three. And then we'll lift the tongue off and allow all notes one, two, and three to sound. Now we're gonna go to hole two. We're gonna switch to be blocking hole one and we'll be playing out of the right corner of the mouth for hole two and then releasing the tongue to let holes one and two sound. Now we're gonna do the same thing, one hole to the right on hole number three. And we're gonna do that again. So nice and slowly, the whole thing. Making it swing and using the tongue to force the chords, it'll sound like this. Since we're getting more advanced now, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the tempo a bit more, and we are just going to practice switching from the one chord riff two times, and then the four chord riff two times back and forth. Ready and go. Yeah.
right, level seven, we've made it to the final frontier. The five chord. As we get into the subject of the five chord, we're gonna revisit the topic that I introduced in level one of tongue switching. Going from playing out of the left corner of the mouth to the right corner of the mouth. And so we're gonna go from the draw one, playing out of the left corner of the mouth to the draw four out of the right corner of the mouth. A question may arise here. Are we blocking holes one, two, and three with the tongue? Or are we just blocking holes two and three with the tongue and letting the lip block hole number one? I'm gonna recommend that we go ahead and block all three holes with with the tongue. That's a great thing to play with and to experiment with, and you can try it both on draws and blows. Of course, we don't really have a five chord on the harmonica, but because we are ghosting these chords, right, we're playing them very quietly, we can kind of get away with just keeping that rhythm going so we have that nice funky rhythm that makes us feel so good. What we're gonna do after we get to that draw four, we're gonna do a blow four and another draw four. So it's gonna sound like this. The chords are not really accurate, but because we're ghosting them, kind of works. And then for the four chord that comes right after the five chord, it's nice to do a motif that's similar to the one that we just did on the five chord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow on the one and then blow on the four again using tongue switching. Then we're gonna go from the draw three to the blow four. Now technically that draw three should be bent. And how you bend when you're tongue blocking is you lift up the back of your tongue into the cuz zone. But we're not gonna worry about the bend today because we're worried about enough things. We're certainly not gonna try and worry about bending right now. Let's try that four chord pattern real quick. And then we're gonna play the one chord riff. And then for our turnaround, we're just gonna end with two draw ones. So let's just try the five, four, one, and turnaround riff and see how that feels. Ready and go. All right, for level eight, we're gonna put it all together and jam it with the band. Let's do this. One, two, ready, go. Hey, if you've been looking for some more blues vocabulary to build up your blues muscle, go check out these videos right here.